Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge R710 server memory upgrades and how to properly configure the system. Well, thanks for stopping by today to learn more about the Dell PowerEdge R710 and some of the uh, uh, server memory upgrades and the pro proper way to install memory and configure the system should you not be maxing it out and how to load all the channels. So we'll get into all the details, but I wanted to do kind of a general overview of the system first to let you guys know more about it. So uh, first things first, this is the next gen to the um, 2950, which is a DDR2 based machine. Uh, there's two types of chassis. Over here you'll see we have the six bay large form factor, and over here we have the eight bay small form factor. Uh, everything inside as far as CPUs and RAM is the exact same. The only difference is, you know, what type of drives do you want to use in the backplane for it. So, uh, on that note, uh, it takes uh, two processors. It's a LGA1366 socket and it uses Intel 5500 or 5600 series CPUs. We recommend going with hex core 5600s. Uh, there's some really good deals out there on like um, X5660, X5670, some of that kind of stuff where you can get uh, still a good amount of um, of speed overall, uh, but still get hex core. So uh, nowadays, that's what we recommend if you're utilizing this machine. Uh, as far as memory is concerned, there are 18 DIMM slots. It uses DDR3 memory, and this is actually the first gen from Dell that does accept DDR3 memory. You can use a couple of different speeds. You can go as low as 1066 megahertz, 1333 megahertz, or up to 1600 megahertz. A lot of times, I'll be honest, so the 1600 megahertz will clock down to 1333. So sometimes, as far as uh, bang for your buck, you might as well just buy the 1333. Uh, as far as the sizes are concerned, you can use 2 gig, 4 gig, uh, 8 gig, 16 gig, and all the way up to 32 gigs. But we'll talk about in a second is there's a mystery that some people wonder is why can I only put in 12 32 gigs for this machine? And we'll talk about that more um, in a few minutes. So the actual max on this machine is 1232 gigs and um, the fastest speed with that that you can do is um, as we talked about 1600 but really uh, the uh, 32 gig 1600 megahertz is kind of a uni uh, unicorn part for ECC registered so we actually always tell people to use the 1333 and again it's going to clock down anyways so that's your best bet for this machine so anyhow now that we know a little bit more about it as a whole let's go ahead and open it up um, show you how to properly configure it and all that good stuff. But before we do, the first thing we need to do is get our ESD gear on. You always want to be safe and protect the machine. So we'll be right back. And we're back with our ESD gear on. So we are safe to open the machine. So first things first, just make sure your latch is set to unlock. Simply pop it open and remove the top. Very simple. Now that we are in, you will notice that there is an air baffle, also known as an air shroud. Uh, and this is here, you know, it's just designed to um, regulate the airflow uh, and help make sure that the dims under it and the CPUs for that matter uh, stay cool. But this is very simple. There's two hooks right here. You're just gonna simply pull it straight up and put it to the side. And voila, now we're in, very simple. So now you can see uh, that there are uh, 18 dim slots as we discussed and that there are um, two CPUs. So um, first things first, whenever I'm changing the RAM, um, I personally like to go ahead and uh, remove the fan. It just makes it a little bit easier on the back. You don't have to do that. You can actually physically do it, but it's just a little bit of a tight squeeze. So I'm going to show you how to remove the fan first. It's just two tabs right here. You pop up and you're going to want to pull it straight up. Okay. All right. There you go. Um, and now you're in, it's just a little bit easier to access everything because you just have a little bit more extra space. So, um, so one of the things that I did want to talk about um, that's going to be very important as we get into uh, some of the channels we're going to discuss here in a second is the type of RAM that the R710 accepts. And this is very, very important uh, because this is an 11th gen server, it only accepts ECC registered. And technically, you could put ECC on buffered in here, but it's such a... Um, a, a higher price point compared to ECC registered and you can only max it out at a very low amount that really it's not even an actual option as far as we're concerned so really the only option is ECC registered for this machine a lot of people ask us if they can put LR dims in here also known as load reduced memory and unfortunately that is not until the next gen uh, which will be the 12th gen which would be the R720 but for the 710 it is strictly ECC registered so I wanted to, to preface that because it's very important because with ECC registered you run into uh, an issue called the RAM 
rank rule. And the rank will, rule we'll, we'll talk about more in a few minutes, but that is what's going to prevent um, us from being able to actually fully load this machine with uh, 1832 gigs. So uh, first things first, let's go ahead and we'll pull out this RAM, we'll load the new RAM, and we'll talk a little bit more about the channel. So whenever I'm actually pulling out RAM, uh, what I like to do is to put my hand over the module as I'm popping the tab. Sometimes the modules will just go flying up and the last thing you want is for uh, a DIMM to uh, get damaged or to damage the motherboard and then uh, potentially you have to replace one or the other or both and uh, that's not an ideal situation. So just real simply, I just put one hand over the top, do it nice and slow uh, and it's just a, a nice easy uh, process and we'll go ahead and just remove the rest of these right now. Okay, and just like that, we got all the modules pulled out. It took about a minute. We fast forward through it to make it a little bit easier for you guys to watch. But um, normally, I also would take these and I'd put them in trays. But I, you know, since we're trying to do the uh, video quick, I'm just putting them on the ESD mat uh, for now, just to make it a little bit simpler. So, all right, now let's get into uh, how to properly configure this. And this is a real important part. And I hope a lot of the reason that people are watching this video. Um, if you're installing RAM in this machine, it's important to understand the channels. So if you're not maxing it out, for instance, let's just say you're putting in six DIMMs, okay, which would be uh, very common. Someone might only want six DIMMs uh, just to be able to, you know, manage uh, some simple stuff for their business, like. Um, uh, running emails. You know, you don't need to max it out all the time. Um, we do recommend that for performance, of course, but some people are doing some pretty simple applications and only need a certain amount of RAM. So let's just say you're putting in six uh, DIMMs and you have two CPUs. Well, the best way to do it to keep a proper uh, balance across the loads, because you want an even balance as a whole, is you would just use the white DIMM slots. The white DIMM slots are the start of the channels. So if I were loading six DIMMs, I would put them in all six of the white DIMM slots and I would skip the two black DIMM slots, okay? And Dell has it labeled, which makes it very nice as well. So if you look, this is actually A1. So this is the very first uh, channel and the first DIMM of the channel. Uh, same thing over here is they're labeled and on the outside over here is B1. So let's say you were only putting in two DIMMs, which I would not recommend, but let's just say that's what you were doing. You'd put them on the two outside slots over here. Uh, just so simple things to understand how to, how to um, properly uh, configure and run your system. So, But it's also very important for the rank rule that we had discussed because the rank rule, what it basically says is for DDR3 machines and specifically for ECC registered, you can only have eight ranks per channel. And as we discussed, this machine has uh, nine DIMMs per CPU. There are three channels per CPU and each channel has three DIMMs, and that's really the crucial part right there that there's three DIMMs per channel because some of the other uh, machines that are out there are only two DIMMs per channel and they basically don't have to worry about the rank, rank rule. And if you um, understand memory well enough, you'll know that all 32 gig DDR3 ECC registered are quad rank. So if you do some simple math, that's you know four ranks and you can only have eight ranks per channel. Four plus four plus four, you hit 12, now you have an error. So you can put two of them in and you will get to eight and that's fine, but as soon as you put that third one in, you now have broken the rule and the machine will throw errors. So people ask us that and that's kind of a mystery out there, why can't I put in 1832 gigs? And it's because 32 gigs are quad rank and because of the rank rule. So hope that makes sense um, because that's kind of a crucial feature. Uh, moving forward in future generations, um, when you can use load reduced memory, it breaks the rank rule and that's the technology we actually recommend uh, for other machines that are you know 12th gen and up. So um, anyhow, uh, if you were doing this um, and you were doing the 32 gigs and you were putting 12 of them in to max out the 384 that we talked about, the best way to do it would be the start of the channels we talked about. So the white, then the black, which is the first black, and then you're going to skip the second black, which is the third slot of the channel. Then you go back to white black, skip the third black, white black, skip the third uh, channel, which is the second black. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. Um, we're going to go ahead and load it up now and show you how to uh, actually do it. Uh, what we have here are uh, 32 gig uh, 1333 ECC registered, which is the top of the line for this machine. Um, we're going to put in uh, 12 of them to max it out at 384 for a local customer. Um, so one of the things that I also want to note before we put these in, uh, very important, is every module has 
a key on it, this little notch that you'll see here right in the middle. This is very important uh, for a number of reasons. It prevents users from putting in the wrong type of memory. So if you were going to put in a DDR4 module, it wouldn't fit. If you're going to put in a DDR2 module, it wouldn't fit. Um, but it's also important because the notch is not directly in the center. And if you look at the, um, the actual slots, there is a notch that's carved out for it in the middle. So if you flip it the wrong way, you could do one of two things. You could damage the module, you could damage the motherboard, neither of which you want. So you just need to be real careful, simple thing just to line it up proper. And I will note, they're all one way over here and it flips on the other side. This is pretty common for motherboards, uh, but it's important because people get, you know, get to load and then they get used to doing it one way and then they forget to flip it and the next thing you know, they got an error. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and start it up. Um, and as I said, you have to do the first two of each channel. And one thing I also like to note for you, when you put it in, some you know, like right now, you know, it feels like it's in. It's really not in, unfortunately. Um, you need to hear this click. So listen for this click. That click, that lets you know that it's been fully inserted. Uh, we run into the issue, um, unfortunately, all too common, where a user thinks that they have a bad dim, and unfortunately, the dim is just not fully seated. So you have to make sure that you are uh, properly putting it in because I, I'll be honest, sometimes you have to push it with a little more force than I would like, um, but that's what you have to do sometimes. And I'm not saying to be rough with it because you have to be gentle, um, but at the same time, uh, if you're being too gentle, you might not actually get it fully inserted. Uh, so just something to, to keep note on. And another thing as we're going to note, I'm skipping that third slot, the second black that we had talked about. Um, you just need to keep skipping that to max it out with quad rank dims. Um, just a very simple thing, but very important. Otherwise, you're going to run into some errors. And as we discussed, it'll keep a proper balance across the load. And right now, as we discussed, it flips, OK? And you start back over here. just like that it only takes a couple of minutes and you can really boost the performance by just adding some RAM and that is one thing that we always tell customers as a whole um, you know this is a, an older machine still a great machine it's a Haas of a machine very popular 11th gen server but it is an older older server so if it's something that you're looking to kind of band-aid and get a couple more years out of your system. Honestly, putting a couple hundred bucks worth of RAM inside it and maxing it out, it's a great solution. Uh, it's the easiest way to increase the performance, in my opinion. Um, and it's one of the things that we always recommend to customers to, to look into doing if that's you know what they're looking for is better performance. Now we'll go ahead and put it back together, but I did want to say thank you guys for stopping by. Uh, please smash that subscribe button if you've made it this far. We definitely appreciate uh, every like that we get in any um, subscriber. So first things first, we're going to put the fan modules back on. Uh, sometimes this can be a little bit of a pain, but it's really not that hard. You just need to make sure you line it up. And sometimes you got to be a little forceful on pushing these down just to make sure you secure it in. Uh, next thing, you just want to put the air baffle back on. And that just slides in nice and easy. So pop on the top and you're done. So, well, thanks again for stopping by. Um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to email us at sales at uh, cloudninja.com or you can leave a comment down below. Um, if you need any upgrades yourself, uh, we sell a ton of memory. That's really what we do is build servers and sell, uh, sell memory. So um, if you need anything, just give us a ring um, and let us know what we can do to help you out. So thanks again for stopping by and take care.